Hello everybody, this is Bite Blast. Here I am again on my Planet Zoo. And today we're going to be building uh, what is the Fossa enclosure at Chester, which is in the Madagascar area. It's, um, it's part of a, a fairly new addition to the zoo that houses um, two enclosures for various types of lemur. There's a ringtail lemur, red rough lemur, black lemur. Um, and, and as I said, they're in two different enclosures, one of which is a walkthrough enclosure. And you'll have seen these two builds in my previous videos. So the walkthrough enclosure was the first of this area. And then uh, I've just recently, uh, maybe maybe three, four, five days ago, posted the second of the Lima buildings and enclosures. Um, and this is the third and final one. And what you'll see today is the completion of the Fossa House, which is what you can see me working on now. Um, but also um, the inclusion of some of the little buildings around the area, like the, the viewing areas. Um, the planting gets done as well around this area. And also there's two off-show buildings that get completed, which um, I'll be showing you those as well. And what we're going to do is um, we're going to be, at the moment, we're actually building one of the uh, the little lean-tos, the little viewing areas. So these um, these are a bit problematic within the game. and they're, they're easy enough to build. It's just you can't put them right next to a fence because there's a problem with some of the fencing and pathing and... and things sticking through fences. If I leave this next to a fence and I put in something that can climb a fence, um, so for example, a lemur, if I put a lemur in this enclosure, they will be able to climb through the fence onto this, which is odd. So you, you need to move it back a couple of feet from the fence and then check. And um, it's been a, a real issue, especially with the first lemur enclosure that I built. Because it, the, the first one has a couple of sluice gates on it, which are um, enabled to let the, the general public walk through the enclosure. And that's meant that the, the lemurs have used those buildings to climb out of the enclosure. So, unfortunately, uh, in-game, we can't use that enclosure for keeping anything that can climb, which is, is what it's designed for in real life. So... It's just a, a bit of a pain. There's no way of doing it, or at least there's no way that I've found of doing it. And I've tried all sorts. I really have. I've tried putting the fencing over the buildings. I've tried putting bits of glass there to stop them climbing through. And uh, it's been a nightmare. It's been a nightmare. But there you go. I'm sure there is a way. I'm sure somebody will get back to me and say, hey, I've fixed your sluice gate issues. But uh, at the moment, I don't know how to do it. So. So as you can see, we've built the fossa enclosure. I've kept it um, pretty representative inside. So there are little rooms inside the actual building. Uh, and what I'm going to do now is the cladding. So this is the cladding I used on the very first lemur enclosure that I built. And it's, uh, it's part of the walkthrough building, that one. Which the cladding looks okay, but it's... Um, it's all monotone. It's just one colour plank. So what you'll see me do in a little while is, after I've stopped messing about with these, um, I spent ages trying to copy these out, um, but I just thought, no, I'll do it from scratch. It was taking too long. Um, what I decided to do was a less monotone, and you'll see me change the, the cladding on the building uh to to make it more of a um more a more of a realistic looking color which i hope i hope you'll agree works i think it works better than than the original one that i'd done so again you can see me put in these beams on the outside of this building it's a plaster building with um a couple of glass panes in there currently uh, and what i do later is i'll make this enclosure this building unavailable to any animals that are in the enclosure simply because again i've got beams touching the walls and i've got these planks touching the walls and the animals can just climb through the walls it it, it just doesn't work it really doesn't it, it there's some there you go look at that look at the coloring on that that's much better than the the ones i had before 
just need to trim them down a bit yeah so any uh, any of these planks that are touching the walls mean that any animals inside can just climb through the wall which uh, that's that's broken that's that's not it's not a feature of the game it's broken but there you go that looks a lot better i think with those uh, multicolored planks in there so um i don't know which bit of chester zoo i'm going to do next i'm sort of in a, a quandary i've either got big projects like um oakfield house which is going to be a big pain or i've got things that i don't know much about so um around if you know chester zoo at all around the um red panda area and the owls um i don't really have many photographs around that part so i'm either gonna to have to wait until i go to the zoo which uh, i don't think it'll be that long but it, it might be a month or two or three or four and although that isn't a a long period of time in the whole scale of things it's a long time to be waiting for the next video and you're not going to be waiting for the next video for several months it's going to be at least one every week and it it, it probably won't be around that area because i'm going to struggle with that so it's either going to be a big project like oakfield um, which i have got some photos of um or it's going to be something uh, fairly simple, like a, an outdoor paddock type area uh, with quite a simple house uh, or enclosure. or, or what, I don't know what you want to call them, houses or enclosures or whatever. I did, have, um, I did have somebody comment saying that they don't call the dens dens, but they do. <laughs> so um, I, I, I just want to say I, I do actually research what I'm doing quite a lot so it's not just me guessing at these buildings i know there's somebody else who is making chester zoo um who doesn't do things very accurately what they'll do is they'll sort of say oh yeah there's a big building here and they'll build a building in that spot but it won't look anything like the real buildings at chester zoo um and also you know i've recently seen somebody building a tiger enclosure um, which is nowhere near the tiger enclosure. It doesn't look anything like the tiger enclosure. Um, but they're still calling it Chester Zoo. And uh, it's not accurate. And that's not what we're going for here. We are going for a degree of accuracy. Um, as I think it's as close as reasonably possible. And I think there is another builder, a third builder, um, who I do promote on my channel. So um, if ever you look in the comments, you just scroll down. There'll be um, a link there to um, a couple of guys called This Game Where. And they're also building Chester Zoo, but they're the same as me. They're going for um, a certain level of accuracy. They're going for, let's try and make this as, as realistic as, as it is to the real zoo um so all the buildings are in the right place to the right proportion they look the same as the buildings in chester zoo um and I, I i like i said i mean i'm i'm quite happy to put their name on my videos every time um you scroll down on any of my chester zoo videos and their name is there there'll be a link to their channel so go and check them out they're uh, they're very good they're called this game where um and um they're doing a great job of chester zoo um there's um there there are other people actually now I mention it making British zoos which you should um ah now this is interesting look this is this is part of my uh, my research what you saw there was um my other monitor so <laughs> so I have I a uh, stream occasionally so I um I have two monitors for streaming um so one that you can read the comments and one that you can play the game on um but i have on my second window um generally got a folder open that has photographs that i've taken um there'll be uh, so there's obviously photos of chester zoo they're not photos of me on holiday with the wife or anything like that you know um so there'll be that and there'll be um usually some sort of map so that's either google maps or bing maps uh, which will give me um, scaling and proportioning to other buildings and there'll also be other things um, and for this particular build I was helped incredibly by the town planning website 
uh, or the the Chester Council website who have all the planning applications for this area so um, when Chester Zoo wanted to build this area they had to put in planning permission and all those drawings are on there which has enabled me to get these buildings fairly accurate so that's how I know how they, they're built inside and you'll see that when I come to the the two off show buildings right at the end of the video um, I've done them inside but you can't actually see inside from any public viewing area um you, you can't get to them or you know but I've, I've built them inside just for accuracy so if we go back to what i was saying before so we've got this game where and myself who are building chester zoo um there's a lady called mrs t-rex so it's mrs and then there's a space and it's t-rex as in t-e-a a, a cup of tea and rex all one word t-rex um and she's been making um edinburgh zoo and she's doing a cracking job of that it looks really good and um she, you should check her website out I'll, I'll put a link to these websites um in the bottom of the the video so you can you can check them out so if you're uh if you're scottish or familiar with edinburgh zoo go and check those videos out even if you're not scottish or uh, familiar with edinburgh zoo go and check the videos out anyway um, and also uh, check this game wear out because um, not only is he doing a cracking job, um, but I think that their their videos are, are slightly better than mine in that the the accuracy of of the build I think is slightly better. Um, I'm I'm getting through it a bit quicker than they are, um, so um, I think I'm I'm sort of rushing to get it finished before I get bored of it. Um, but I think they're doing a great job. They're doing a, a fantastic job. And as I said, I'm I'm quite happy to promote them. Um, the other the other guy that is doing a British zoo is a, a chap called Bongo Hardwood, <laughs> which is a cracking name. <laughs> so uh, Bongo Hardwood is he's actually a real keeper, and he's a he's a keeper at Whipsnade. And he is building whips, whip snade, um, which is great. It, it gives you, it, it gives, it gives him something that I haven't got, and that's backstage access. So a lot of things with Chester Zoo and and the build that I'm doing. So for example, you can see some of the buildings in the background here, and there's gaps in between what I'm building and those buildings, and they might be some of the off stage areas, some of the bits that. I can't get to and I don't have photographs of the general public don't take photos of what's over that wall although next time I go I might be tempted to throw the camera over a wall or two um, and I think that that gives bongo hardwood and again that's all one word I think bongo hardwood um, that gives him a certain degree of um, more accuracy within his build but so he's doing whipsnade um, and as I said, we've got Edinburgh and Chester Zoo with other people. All the links will be in the descriptions below. So check those out. Check them all out. They're all great. Um, what else? Well, you can see now I'm building the rope work. This is um, something that I've I've decided is, is my favourite way of doing this. Other people have done it different ways. Uh, Chester Zoo has, has quite a few areas where they're covered in netting. So either for this area which houses lemurs and fossa um, but there are other areas that house birds and they're free flight areas so the birds are allowed to uh, fly around within that enclosure but it's very difficult within the game to create netting so some people have put glass up some people have um, left it just empty some have tried to recreate netting by using these ropes and actually making a kind of net with them um, all of them have their merits. Um, there we go. More of the more of the secret photos. Don't tell anybody. Uh, all of the the methods of making nettings have their merits. Uh, some look better than others. Um, this is my preferred method, but you know it it sort of indicates where the netting should be without obscuring the view. Yeah, yeah. Make your own choice. Make your own choice. So. Um, these little um, huts have a, a glass panel 
So they're, they're not actually looking through the meshing there. They're looking through a glass panel there. And uh, in the real zoo, these go right up to the fence. Um, and that bit of fence is glass. But it's netting its mesh above the little hut. If you see what I mean, it's sort of half and half. So it's mesh above and glass below. And again, you can't do that within game. So I've had to not only move the hut back from the fence to stop anything climbing through the fence, but I can't just put glass in and not have the meshing. So we're moving on now to putting some plants in there. So whereas we had a, an empty enclosure before, and you can see me looking through the photographs I've got. Many of these were uh, which I took uh, earlier this year when I went. A few little rocks and things in there and, and bits of foliage. And again, trying to keep it true to the actual environment that the, the fossil lives in. Uh, we're, we're looking at uh, tropical plants from Africa. And those are the only ones we're allowed to build inside the enclosure. Uh, when we do the outside the outside planting around the enclosure, I've gone for just general plants. They're not uh, indicative of tropical African plants. They're just anything. And then I've just put some pathways in around the, the plants. So it looks like there's a, a worn pathway. And now we're moving on to the outdoor planting. Ray. So this is um, this is an important bit. It, it's it's fairly easy to actually build an enclosure and put it in somewhere, and it, it doesn't quite sit right or it doesn't look right. And I find that when you actually then put in the plants that that line the enclosure or the path, uh, that's when it starts coming to life and it starts looking uh, more realistic, or or it, it sort of brings the zoo together. There you go. See these all oh, these are photographs that I took when I went. So I'm just looking at this area and see how it's planted, how tall are the trees, what sort of plants are in there. Is there a bench in front of it, for example? <clears throat> yes, there is. And then there's a little hut at the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use one of the huts that I've used against the, the mesh and reappropriate it. So I'm, I keep looking back at the reference photo for uh, for cues on on where there are beams or where there's a glass bit or a wooden bit. Uh, there's no side on this one, but there is a back on it. There are some uh, little planks there. So I don't just guess at this. You see, it's not uh, it's not all. Oh, let's just. Let's see if I can guess at how this is built. It's all it's all from photographs or plans, and it, it takes a long time. See, I estimate for each build, so for this one enclosure, I reckon I've put maybe 10, 12 hours in, uh, and that's research, that's building and recording the video. I mean, this video is sped up 10 times, and the video is... 25 minutes long so there you go 25 minutes times 10 <clears throat> it's probably quite a short build actually in fact no actually i didn't record all of the the building because um there were bits of planting and things like that that i haven't put in the video but yeah this is probably at least a seven hour video at least seven hours um, plus then the, the looking for the correct photos, how should it be laid out, how close are the buildings to each other, how close are the buildings to the stables and the islands in danger building. Now, here's a good example here. The, the, the plans for this building... Um, didn't show an awful lot of detail on it so it it took me a bit to sort of work out where the roof was exactly and i have got a photograph from the side of this building but it's quite a long way away and i struggled to sort of see exactly what was going on and so i do the roof wrong initially 
uh, in that the the palm roof that I put on it um, goes all the way across the building and you can see me putting these sides on um, in reality these sides aren't like that and you'll see me change it when I realize my mistake later on so I'm just trying to work out the best way of putting this on we want them to overhang on all sides because there is a uh, an overhang on this building and I do it and I like it and I save it save regularly folks save regularly I've used the same paneling because all these buildings were built at the same time they all use the same paneling they all have the same sort of theme to them and yep the paneling does cover up the cages at the side or well part of it it doesn't cover all of it you'll see in a bit I'll change it all Again, I've gone with this multicolored uh, plank. I'm trying to match the colors a little bit better there, but uh, I think the multicolored plank looks a lot better than the, the, the single colored planks. But a, a lot of, of building these enclosures and buildings, you, you start out and you build something and think, oh, I've done a good job of that. And you go away and you build some more and build some more. You learn a different technique or you see somebody else do something. And then you come back and look at yours and go, I could do better on that. And you end up going back and fiddling with it and changing things. And just generally revisiting takes a lot of time up. And I've tried to stop myself doing it now. It's, um, it's something that once it's built, it's built and I want to leave it or else I'll never get the rest of the zoo finished. I'll be constantly going back and tweaking and improving. And of course the zoo's evolving all the time so i need to keep up with that so um at the moment there's a there are plans for a, a massive new area which will mean a big change to my zoo um so i'll need to think about doing that and in fact i might even be able to start on it now look there you go i've changed the roof the roof doesn't go all the way across you know <laughs> I know that. You know that now. <clears throat> so when I originally made this video, um, I did a little outro video. So a kind of, um, hey folks, thanks for watching. Here's, here's a little look round. Um, and I recorded that um, as I'd finished the build. So I'm going to hand you over to that for the end bit. And um, you'll, you'll see me revert back to, I mean, I mean you're, you're sat here listening to this. It won't make any difference because it's still me talking but um I, I actually recorded this before i did this voiceover but we're going to be going to that in a minute once i've got these two buildings in so um the, the, these are off show buildings as i said the public can't get in them um i am short of some information so i know there's a gutter there i don't know where the downpipe is on the gutter uh, just little things like that i'll need to check next time i go to the zoo uh, and I need to then copy these into the actual positions where they are in the zoo. So I've already put placeholders in just there. So you can see me now marking out where I'm going to put them. And then we save them as a blueprint and then we can paste them in quite easily. So I'll hand it over to my previous self for the last bit of the video. Well, there you go, folks. That is my build of the Madagascan area at Chester Zoo. It's um, pretty much completed. I have a few little gaps that I haven't done because I have a lack of knowledge. And it's just simply getting that information. And I'm talking about places like this here. I, I don't really know what's there at the moment. And also in between these two buildings, I don't know uh, whether there's a fence or anything there, but I, I do know there are two trees there. Um, but apart from that, it's pretty much done. I need to do a, a little bit of signage. So um, th there's, there's little bits inside some of these shelters that tell you about the animals that you're looking at. And uh, also we're going to need a power source nearby to power this and some of the other signs. But apart from the signage, um, I think we're pretty much done. Uh, we've got two lemur enclosures, number one. And a, a walkthrough one, which is fantastic. 
uh, and a fossa enclosure, which is is pretty good as well. There's the house for it, and there's the enclosure. And I think overall, it, it looks fantastic. Now we've planted it out a little bit. It, it really, really does bring home that area of Chester Zoo to life. I think that's it's really uh, it's really enhanced my zoo as um, as it does in real life. Oh, the other the other bit I haven't got is um, what goes on down here. I don't know whether it's fenced or or planted, and I'm not 100% sure yet. But we'll we'll find that out eventually, even if it means a trip to the zoo. But there you go. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the uh, the build. And why have I got um, a load of poles in there? Uh, we'll have to have a look at that, I think. Um, I hope you've enjoyed the build. And um, I hope that you uh, you join me for the next video. My name is Blast. I'll catch you next time.